everything. I had one. I don't think they understand what everything means. Oh, they took everything. I had washed clothes that were clean. They took that. They took those. They took the napkins, designed the napkins off my dining room table. Right now, there's no napkins in my napkin holders because they took that. They took the curtains off the windows. Everything that was of material, they came and took it. They took purses. They took shoes. Like, I have about, I'm telling you, they took everything. So towels, I, dish towels. They took the <laughs> towels off the stove for decorations for the kitchen. They took the rugs. They don't got no rugs in the bathroom. They took everything. channel my name is Erica and this is the love project and this is my handsome husband Mr. DeShields how you doing babe I'm doing well how are you I'm doing good so as you all know I've been on a hiatus so I ain't gonna say I'm back or the I'm back because you know that's what some of the YouTube people be doing they go for a little while they talk about their back I ain't never left I just been low key, you know, it's been a lot going on, a whole lot. And if you look at my last videos, I felt something brewing because I was like, I feel you know, I just feel like this year gonna be, I don't know, but anyway, the Holy Ghost definitely was on me. And here we are, it's July, it's July, we already halfway through the year, More but. We definitely want to catch you guys up. So first and foremost, if you are new here, welcome, welcome to the Love Project. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe, and join the Love Squad. Love Squad. <laughs> join the Love Squad, and if you are returning, I know you like E. Where have you been? Listen, well, all is well. All has been well. Um, so we just want to take the time to catch everybody up on what's been going on and make progress for the rest of the year all right so first things first we would like to say that one of the main reasons i haven't had any videos is because we just got back home i know you like just got back home we just got back home literally so this is our first weekend back in our house uh in a month, over a month actually. Yeah. So we had um, a situation come up where our neighbor's house, the house right here, so this room was highly affected, but the house next to us caught a fire, right? Friday night of uh, what, June 14th? 15th. The 15th. We're laying down in the bed, chilling, watching TV, and what happened? We're watching the game. My wife says, Babe, go downstairs and we put the turkey wings out. I had cooked turkey wings early that day. Yeah. And um, I said, okay. So I go downstairs and I put the turkey wings out. I come back upstairs and we just keep on hearing this door, the doorbell ring. And I'm like, it's 1030. Who is ringing the doorbell? Yeah. And um, then we begin to smell some smoke. Mm -hmm. So she's like, I'm getting, kind of getting dressed because she's like, babe, Ask, you got any answer to the door and I'm like okay so I goes downstairs I didn't know that she was behind me but she was but instead of going to the door I goes kind of towards the kitchen mm -hmm. to make sure it wasn't nothing in our kitchen that's burning and I looks like straight forward outside I'm like oh my god babe I shed is on fire I shed is on fire <laughs> get out get out and I like I said, I didn't know she was downstairs. So she's like... Yeah, I was literally at the door. <laughs> so... Because I actually was opening the door because they was ringing the doorbell. And I'm like, 
it had to be an emergency. One, nobody come to our house. Two, it's 1030 at night. Like, if somebody was coming to our house, they're going to hit us up. Yeah. Ain't nobody just going to. And honestly, it's the way they was ringing the doorbell. Like, it was ding, ding, ding. Like, you could tell somebody was, like, just pressing, pressing, pressing. And so, I already was in, like, mode. So that's what made me like follow him down the stairs because I'm like, if something is going on, I need to already be down there to see what's up. You know, even if I need to fight, you know, I'd be ready. So <laughs> I'm behind him, but yes, he started screaming about the shit on fire. The shit. And I'm like, oh my goodness. So, and then when I opened the door, the um, our neighbor's kids was already outside, yeah. but they was like standing towards the curb and they was like, get out the house, get out the house. And so I'm like, babe, come on, let's go. So we just ran out the house. He had no shirt on. No shirt. No, no shoes. No shoes. I didn't have any shoes on. And we outside. And once we got outside, I went straight to the curb where they was. The son, he must have been in the shower because he only had a towel on. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. And at this point, you can definitely smell the smoke, you know. And yeah. um, I ran back in the house to try to get some shoes, my phone. That was a little after, though. That wasn't It was a little little bit after, but it was before that fire department came. Was it? Yes. I beat Uh, the fire department because, you know, they wouldn't let me, they wouldn't let us nowhere near. I beat them. uh, And that's when I could really smell, like, I got in. Yeah, because I I was like, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. Because the smell, and it was taking my breath. Mm. Mm. So, um, I'm standing on the curb at this point um, with the neighbor's kids, and... Obviously, they're wreck, you know, they're young, um, young adults, I would say, maybe like 20 and 18 or so. Yeah, because one of them recently graduated high school, and then the other one was not too far behind. Yeah, so they're young adults, um, and the one who was obviously in the shower, he was just devastated. He didn't say much. Uh, the other one, he was a wreck. So, I was like, oh, Lord, what is going on? So, they, at that point, I knew it was their house that was on fire. Because I was able to see the flames. Like, all I saw was flames from the backyard. So, I thought that, you know, possibly they was doing something in the backyard caught on fire. And, you know, of course, he said our shit was on fire. Um, so, then you eventually, I guess, once you grab your stuff, came out or whatever. And, <laughs> and we, like, I had just... Move my car. Move my car now, the fire people was here by then. Yeah, they were here. They came really quickly. They but did. you know what fire is. It there did. is no such thing as quick because it spread it literally so did. fast. It spread it real fast. Mm-hmm. The windows were blacked out. The, you can see where the upstairs were windows were just black. Yeah. 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 So, um, at this point, all the neighbors obviously coming outside. And then um, once the fire people got here, they start knocking on all the other doors. Because pretty much we have a townhouse. Um, and we the second house, well, the first house to the end. Um, is it five houses on the row? I think it's five. Um, so they're the end house and we're right next to them. Um, and so the five people were knocking on all the doors and making sure everybody uh, got out, obviously, until they able to assess everything. And it was just so nerve wracking. One, it happened so fast. Two, it it was like we really didn't know what was going on. It's just like I don't know how you felt. Like what you was thinking? I was, I was okay, but you know, then I had the smoke in my lungs a little bit, and I don't know. I was just thinking about. I was really kind of devastated on the family. Because uh, the parents went home, they came after, mm-hmm. so they had to see the base of that house on going fire. on fire, like mm-hmm. literally. So that was kind of sad. So I mean, I went by and gave them a hug and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it was just not knowing what was going to happen. It was so it was like triggering in a sense because. I just kept looking at that family and I'm thinking, you know, it's a nice bit of people that live there. Um, And I'm like, they're going to be out of the house, you know, what's the next steps and just all of this stuff. And it was mainly for them because, again, I've been in situations where you can't be in your house and you got to, you know, figure out where you're going to stay and stuff like that. So I was like in my mind a lot about that. 
Um, I remember definitely like standing there just praying yeah. and stuff. And I was also very grateful that everybody got out, you know, because um, and I was grateful that the young guys was in their right mind to come and get us because we didn't know. Like, it probably would have took a while for us to uh, realize or uh, for the smoke to get on yeah. the side of the house where we was um, for us to realize. So, the fact that not only did they house catch on fire, they actually thought, because you could go into shocking situations like that, but they actually thought to come in, let's get our neighbors out, you know? So, yeah. I really appreciated that. And then how quickly it spread, because if it, you know, it... Now we're looking at it, mm -hmm. and we can see, like, if it was any more... Yeah, any more would, time, we would have been highly affected. Yes. So, um, speaking of effects, um, one of the things that happened is just, like, there's a lot of grace um, over this situation, despite um, what did happen. But one of the things was the fire... Um, more sure one of the firefighters ended up telling us that um, we have a firewall in place and I mean instantly it was just like this relief because mind you we outside seeing the fire we just left out of our house we see the blaze and all of this stuff going on and and I'm in my mind I'm like it's no way we not gonna be affected by this like it's no way and when he came and he was like, um, you know, y'all can go in the house and grab some stuff if y'all need to. Y'all have a firewall up. And um, the guy was like, he said, this usually don't happen. He was like, because with townhouses, everybody usually is affected when the fight happened. And I was like, oh, wow, you know. And so there was... Um, our house did not catch a fire. Um, our living um, area didn't mm -hmm. catch a fire. Um, the only things that was affected by the it, by the fire itself was the backyard. Like Marco said, the shed was on fire yeah, the and the fence was um, burned down. Um, but again, very minor, I, and especially in comparison because they lost everything. Um, yeah. We didn't see that anything was salvageable from the house not only was the house on fire but once they come and put the fire out there's a lot of water you know so what didn't get damaged in the fire most likely got damaged in the water so um i don't believe anything was salvageable from that house and like i said for us to be directly connected to them and to not have um any fire caught our house it was just a total blessing mm -hmm. but the thing that we did experience the most was the smoke and if anybody knows smoke smells smoke linger and smoke get into things and that's what caused us to be out of our house for over a month because um everything smelled like smoke and our hair smelled like smoke and and I'm like my purse smell like smoke. My makeup bag smell like smoke. My, I'm like, um, my computer bag. Computer bag oh. smell like smoke. Our book bags because we wear book bags to work smell like smoke. And it was just it was crazy because you just don't think that everything like it gets into just everything. So what you thought about that piece? It was crazy. You know I was smelling everything. It I was just walking by like. Hey, this smell like smoke. <laughs> She's like, what? I'm like, you don't smell that? You don't smell that? Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah. But it's also um, kind of reminds me, I'm like, dang, even though it was next to the fire, we didn't get touched by the fire. Yeah. But, we wasn't consumed. We wasn't consumed. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Um, and it was like the first couple of days, <laughs> It was a lot. Like, it, it was a lot. Because you didn't know what was happening. And... Yeah. I was trying not to let her worry. Because I was following the insurance claim, like, right then. Yeah. Like that yeah. Same night. But even then, when we filed it, we can we knew we weren't going to talk to anybody until Monday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but um, it was in there. <laughs> yeah. And that, I mean, I wasn't really worried about that part. Because 
again, I've been in situations and I know when you have insurance and stuff, like, you know, things gonna get taken care of. So I wasn't really worried about that aspect. I think I was just thinking about like the long term what that process looked like. Cause I mean, even just being caught in storms, right? Well, my house wasn't affected. I they've had storms where thankfully I had no issues with my house. Um, but I didn't have lights for three weeks, you know, and I understand the process of things. And when tragedy happens, it's so out of your control, you know, you Mm -hmm. just don't know like what's to come. So that's how I kind of was about it because I'm like, I'm familiar with the process of things like this, but I'm not familiar with this type of situation. I don't know what this look like. I don't know what the long term look like. And it was just, yeah, I was just in my mind about it. But so, um, aside from the fire, again, we had a hotel for over a month. The first week, we on the beach, right? So, <laughs> baby, the insurance company was not happy with us <laughs> because we was living our best life on the beach. It took, again, a couple of days because I was, like, in my mind about everything. And I'm like, so by Wednesday, I'm like, babe, you know what? We on the beach. This is a staycation. We just going to enjoy it and, you know, go with the flow. Like, I'm not about to let this stress me out, whatever, whatever. Yeah, because I had took off because we were supposed to go to Love City. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was the following week you was coming yeah. up on your vacation. Um, and so I'm like, you know, we just need to enjoy. And I mean, if you follow me on um, Facebook or social media, you saw we was out and about living our best life. You know, people don't even know that this happened. A lot of people don't know. We can count the people on one hand we did share with. Um, but we didn't want to worry anybody. Um, neither did we want to kind of, you know, have people anxious or concerned about us because for the most part we was okay we didn't have no clothes these people came in man they came in and took everything everything i had washed i don't think they understand what everything means oh they took everything i had washed clothes that were clean they took that they took those they took the napkins designer napkins off my dining room table Right now, there's no napkins in my napkin holders because they took that. They took the curtains off the windows. Everything that was of material, they came and took it. They took purses. They took shoes. Like, I have about, I'm telling you, they took everything. Towels. Dish towels. They took the (laughs) towels off the stove for decorations for the kitchen they took the rugs they don't got no rugs in the bathroom they took everything so i was talking <laughs> to my wife i stayed home that day so yeah he was here when they were taking everything so i had this thought because i was trying you know i went down saying i was like oh we had these clothes that already washed and i try to catch them because they, they was in the room it was too late they had already back. I mean, they had about 30. 30 I'm going to put up a picture of Man. the bags that they had. It was too late. I, my wife was like, what? You can't? I said, babe, it's gone. All right, they came and find where the stuff is at. People had a joke that Marcus only had one bag and the rest was mine. Listen, I do have a lot of stuff that I know, but they, they had to do that. And he was in on it. But anyway, yeah, they took everything. So um, our stuff actually gets to deliver tomorrow. Yeah, so we tomorrow still tomorrow. really just kind of working on the so different I things we had. Back into the house. We brought new clothes and stuff to be able to, you know, have something in circulation for this last month or so. Um, but I do need me some shoes. I, I need my shoes back. And I need to make sure they, they did well with my shoes. So, pretty much they clean and everything. Um, so, we are happy about that. From the last video that I made, um, we I ended up not making a video because Morgus came down with COVID. So, he initially thought he had the flu or, you know, something like that. He was just, like, feeling bad. Yeah. 
She put me on quarantine. In the room. That's what you do when you have COVID. I couldn't move when I ran the house. And I didn't want to catch it. So he was on quarantine. He was on legit quarantine. He was in the master bedroom by himself. I slept in a guest room. I brought him drinks. I brought him breakfast, lunch, and dinner to the bed. Only the he was able to use the bed and the bathroom. That was it. He didn't come out and contaminate the rest of the house. He was on quarantine. And I took care of you. Didn't I? Yes. Was you in need for anything? Besides so, company. <laughs> <laughs> and I even came from your company. I mean, I wasn't under you or nothing, but I got in our rocking chair and watched TV with you and moving six feet. Right? Yeah. Six feet. And I, I stayed healthy. I didn't catch it. And then, when you got to day five, I let you out. <laughs> he got released. <laughs> he got released. And then he was moving around the house. I, I was literally work. under house arrest. He was under arrest. quarantine. Room arrest. Quarantine. Okay. You act like I did that to you. Okay. You gotta follow the rules. He wanted me to get sick. Nope. He think about last time we had COVID and I still was sleep. We still was sleeping in the bed together and everything. It was just like, well, if you got it and I got it. Because why? Because you gave it to me and you didn't want to be. You ain't quarantine. <laughs> That's what happened when you're in quarantine. <laughs> so from experience, we knew what happened when you're in quarantine. Both of you end up sick. So I wasn't going for that this time. I said, oh, no, we're going to do this right, give you a little five days, and then we're going to be okay. And we made it. Day five, I went back to work. You started moving around the house, and we sanitized everything and made sure everything got back fine. And then, next thing you know, I now this day five, I come back to bed. First of all, I could not sleep in that guest bed. I toss and turn all night. Now, mind you, we done had multiple guests at our house. And what they all say, that be so comfortable. I slept so good. Boy, I got that guest me. I said, oh, no. <laughs> he, he need to hurry up and get healed. Jesus, heal up. Because I need my bed. And I toss and turn all night. She missed me, y'all. That, that definitely could have been it. I, I need my warm thighs now. Nah. I was, yeah, I, I ain't like it over there. I ain't like it over there. So, then I came back to bed, and um, I could not sleep. Why? My stomach started cramping. And I said, I'm tossing and turning my stomach cramping. I'm like, ooh, baby, my stomach cramping. And I was like, um, oh, I'm going to go take me some medicine and get my heat in bed or whatever. And so, next thing you know, it was like, my stomach cramp that night that was Wednesday all over the weekend so Sunday Sunday I was Saturday evening I was talking to my friend and she was like she was like oh hey friend how you doing I said oh I'm not doing good and she was like well I said I haven't slept in three days my stomach cramped so bad I was like and my period should be done on Monday Right. What about before that? This all this is Saturday. Okay. Yeah. This all this is happening you, I Saturday. I thought you. I was asking you. Did you take a COVID test first? I mean, you probably did, but I told you that stomach cramps and COVID don't go together. I'm like, <laughs> well, yeah, because you definitely asked me that. Because I'm like, why would I take a COVID test for my stomach cramping? I I didn't think they had nothing to do with nothing. Yeah, and so, <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> my friend was like, oh, oh, friend, I hate to tell you, but you pregnant. And I'm like, I ain't pregnant. I said, Mocha just told me to take a test yesterday, uh, last night or something. And um, she was like, oh, you need to, you need to find out. 
Oh, whatever. And I'm like, oh, whatever. So, I mind you, I'm on the toilet. My stomach is hurting. I had done took a stool softener. I needed answers, right? So, he talked about COVID and taking the pregnancy test. My friend talked about a pregnant. I ain't want to talk to none of them. I'm like, Lord, just remove it. Remove it out of my stomach. It hurts so bad. Mind you, I suffer. I suffer during my menstrual. Like, cramping the works, you know. Cramping, craving, throwing up, like, everything. I have the cramps in my back, like, all kind of stuff going on my menstrual. So, I'm not, like, new to this. So, usually I have, like, remedies, you know, for whatever, but nothing was working. So, then, um, Sunday morning, I'm getting ready for church. And you get ready for church, right? I was in the, you, in the shower. Yeah, he in the shower. So I took a test. And I took two tests, actually. And it wasn't nothing was showing. So I was like, oh, I must have peed on him like too much. I must have saturated too much. And now it's not reading. So I threw the, trash, the test in the trash can. And then I go and get ready for church. So as I'm doing my makeup, the Holy Ghost was like, go open the trash so i go open the trash both of the tests positive i cut up i just started screaming i ran to the bathroom by marcus and i said babe we're pregnant we're pregnant and he got an eczema on his face <laughs> and he in the shower and he look out the shower thing and he said babe i'm in the shower i'm like i know you're in the shower but i can't and he was like he couldn't sick. see he like got one eye and I'm like baby pregnant and things see see he like when you took a test like, first of all you asked the wrong question didn't you hear what I said I, I said we're pregnant so that has been one of the main reasons I haven't made no video because the first two months yes I say two months was very intense with the cramping. Yeah, I said no, I said too much because it took us nine weeks to get an ultrasound. Oh, yeah. So it wasn't that I was going through anything, uh, or the physical pain for months. That only lasted for a week. But at that point, like, I really wasn't sure that the baby was planted right until we got the ultrasound. So that's why I said two months because it was kind of like in this limbo of, you know, just praying that everything was what it needs to be and that everything was well because having those implantation cramps is, you know, it's like my wrecking because, again, it's pain. Pain, you know, pain produces great things, obviously, but when you're in pain, it's also usually a signal that something is wrong right is your body telling you something is wrong so i didn't have confirmation that all was well until it was two months because they didn't do an ultrasound until i was nine weeks so that's why i say the first two months was like you know because i'm i'm you know trying not to be in my head about it and making sure that we in prayer um and we didn't tell anybody um we eventually uh told our leaders no, we didn't tell them to the ultrasound. We didn't tell nobody for two months. Wow. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Those two months was, it was intense. Yeah, we didn't tell nobody. Yeah, so we didn't tell anybody. So again, we going through this thing, right? We getting a positive test, so we know that we pregnant, but we just didn't have the confirmation that all was well because I had done went to an appointment before the ultrasound, but they just confirmed that I was pregnant, which I already knew that. I was so mad of it. I said, you know what they did? They told me what I already do. You're pregnant. I know you know I'm pregnant because you did the same test that I did that told me I was pregnant. And I had done took about five tests. <laughs> and then, um, but again, it was like, you know, it's too early for us to see anything. So we're going to schedule you for ultrasound. And that took two months. And then, so when we went to the ultrasound, <laughs> this was like the best part because we went to the ultrasound and you know of course 
we don't have any kids, so this is new for both of us. So it's it's a beautiful experience because we learn it together and yeah. experience and everything together. So what happened when we got to the the ultrasound? Well, we go to the ultrasound. I'll start the film and my wife we goes in. I'm like all excited. So he gets in there and the lady's like, all right, so we're going to put the thing in and it may take a little bit of time to see the baby. He's like, whoo! <laughs> that, that, that's baby D. Baby D. Like, I'm like, oh So my. then she put the thing in. Baby. Big baby. I was like, what? I said, Baby, <laughs> I'm like in my mind. I'm thinking it's gonna be like can this we, little peanut, we, and they we gotta explain it, we to us it on this app. They give it the fruits and stuff, so we try to compare. It. Yeah, I I just thought it was gonna be something they had to explain to us, like, oh, here's the baby. This is the no, when soon as they put that thing in, I said, oh, that's a ba- a whole baby. Whole baby. Big-headed little baby. Baby so, D. So, baby D shields. We call him the baby baby D until we find out if it's a boy or a girl. So, baby D has been our way of not um, assigning um, a gender to the baby too early because people do that. We call the baby he or she. Don't do that to my baby. It's baby D. Baby D. Uh-huh. And people be saying that he... Every now and then, I had to catch him, too, a couple of times. I said, uh-uh, Baby D, we ain't doing that to our baby until we find out for sure. So, Baby D. And, um, so we are expecting a beautiful baby by the end of the year. We are excited about that. Um, my cheeks hurting right now. I just talk about it. <laughs> because... I'm so excited. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. How you feel? I feel great. You feel great. You gonna be a daddy? A daddy. Yeah. And I oh. got upgraded. I got upgraded. Um, my friends say from from E to E mommy. I like that. <laughs> e mommy. <laughs> and so I'm excited. Just know the love squad is growing. Um, the the Shields family is growing and we are so happy and so excited to share with you. Um, and we will be having, um, we'll be finding out the gender real soon. Um, and we'll decide, you know, what all we want to share. Uh, and you know, some things we want to keep to ourselves and we're grateful that we've been able to keep, um, things close, uh, so long because listen, after a while, the baby exposure is only so long you can you know hide. <laughs> um, and really I've been <laughs> really really graced um, during this pregnancy. Honestly, aside from that one week of those cramps, I was telling y'all that I was experiencing um, early on. I haven't had any issues. God has been so good. This has been a very smooth, easy pregnancy. I mean, I just eat, sleep, you know. Yeah, I'm getting kind of big now, so I'm a little, you know, ooh, ah, ooh, ah. <laughs> But besides that, no issues, no morning sickness. Um, well, that's finding out so early because technically I found out before my missed period. Because um, as I mentioned, I was expecting my period that following um, that upcoming week. So I was able to find out real early. So I was able to start my um, vitamins. And honestly, we have a vitamin regimen life anyway. Um, so I was able to get on my prenatals real early. Um, and just, you know, being a no. So I was able to find out really early. And that is very, very helpful, um, I believe. So no, no, no morning sickness, no evening sickness, no issues or concerns. Everything been well. I mean, early on, I was like, you don't feel like I'm pregnant. Like, nothing is happening, you know, but it, it those days are gone. <laughs> you know, those days are gone. I definitely feel pregnant. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I recently just got some movement, like, this week. So, they definitely got a baby now. And the, the baby is moving, you know. And so, just to share... 
I'm gonna show y'all my limbo. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Baby D. Say hey, Baby D. Say hey. Say hey, love squad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, we big. <laughs> we are excited and we are so happy to um, share this with y'all. I'm so grateful for those that have been a, a part of the Love Project. Um, for a little over a year now, maybe a year and a half, I've been doing this, um, page and there's so much, um, to come. If you have been a part of the Love Squad and you've been listening, you know that this has been a desire of our hearts. Um, this has definitely been something I spoke on of, you know, just asking the Lord to take us, um, to that next level and next stage in our marriage by giving us um, a family so God is faithful he has done it um and we are more than excited about it we parents yeah we're gonna be parents thank you Lord so we ask that y'all just pray for us um definitely send sincere prayers of um us being able to carry continue to carry well baby d grow healthy and strong and go full term um and that all is well and if you have any questions um you can always put in the comment section there is an email where you can email us um if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me uh directly um again i do ask that you guys respect our privacy um, and allow us to share the things we want to share and, you know, just respect the things that we don't want to share. Um, so, and the moms, if you have any advice for first time moms, um, anything that's a must have that I should add to my registry, different things like that, be sure to share with me. Um, I'm very excited. Um, I've been a part, and he's been a part of raising many kids, but it's nothing like when you have your own. Um, so, again, we're super excited. We're super grateful. And we thank y'all for being a part of this journey. So, thank y'all for watching this video. I will be back now since the secret is out. You know, I don't got to hide no more. <laughs> but uh, I will keep y'all updated in the process. I love y'all. And I'll see you next time. Love ya.